If you came to Trinity Sunday a bit perplexed, you are not alone. In today's readings, we see that some of the very few explicit mentions of Trinity in the Bible. The only time the three personas of God make a joint appearance in the Bible is when Jesus is baptized. The dove of the Spirit descends from heaven onto Jesus, and the voice of the Father says, This is my beloved Son. Pretty dramatic, and it seems very important, but is it really? Why do we make such a big deal out of the Trinity if it's so inscrutable? If you're confused, you're not alone, because the Trinity has been puzzling for millennia. I find it helpful to think about the Trinity as the divine dance, as Richard Rohr describes in his 2018 book. The Trinity is not only about the mechanics of God, but also tells us about the very nature of God and our relationship with God. So it's worth the effort to wrestle with it. Since the beginning, the early church fathers fought about the mechanics of the Trinity. It's easy to dismiss this as an as esoteric mumbo jumbo. So, and which I'm also prone to do, but it's also important to talk about what the Trinity is not. By doing this, you'll see what makes Christianity unique. First, the Trinity is not three gods. While this seems pretty clear to us, it was a major controversy in the early church. Honestly, even today, we talk about the three persons of God so distinctly that someone who had never heard of Christianity before would be confused. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are not subordinate to God the Father. If they were, then the sacrifice of Jesus would not have the total involvement of one of the one true God in our salvation. And the Holy Spirit would be just a messenger God instead of the actual breath of life. Second, God is not just three different personalities that show up at different times and in different circumstances. How could all three personalities be present at once? And how could Jesus be killed on the cross? Wouldn't that kill God? Third, probably the sneakiest and yet the most appealing heresy is called Arianism. It says that Jesus was created by God the Father before the creation of the world, and that the Spirit was also created. It is easy to think this because of the language that we use. Father and Son is confusing and limiting in many ways. The biggest challenge with Arianism is that it puts God on a pedestal far away, and that Jesus and the Spirit are merely ambassadors. Our intimacy with God as God's creation is interrupted. This distance from God of God from his creation is a common feature of many religions in the world. But as Christians, we believe that God is intimately and viscerally involved with humanity in all ways, in mind, body, and spirit. The banner on the wall over there that you can see is, represents the Nicene Creed. You can clearly see the triangle representing the three-in-oneness of God. The Nicene Creed was developed in the fourth century to clear up the controversies about the Trinity. In it, we say that God is of one substance, Father, maker of heaven and earth, Jesus begotten, and Holy Spirit, giver of life. This is where describing the Trinity as the divine dance has such value. Instead of just mechanics, God is relationship. God's very nature is relationship. The three personas of God point to each other in relationship. We agree that God is love in every way. So what could be more loving than lifting the other up? None of the three personas of God puffs themselves up. Neither is more important than the other. 
In perfect relationship, they lift each other up in the divine dance. If that is all there was, it wouldn't matter much to us. Instead, the most important part of the dance is that we are invited to dance along. God has a body in Jesus so that he can dance with us. God has breath in the spirit to dance with us. God has heart in the Father to dance with us. The relationship of God with God's self is in God's very nature, an invitation to us. We only need to say yes to join in, into the peaceable kingdom, in perfect community. I want that, don't you? Amen.